Um, Maybe should I should show something I did previously, like last year's. Yeah, sure. Yeah, so. The interface looks much nicer. Before, you could view the whole map, and then it would snap in your your tiles when they reach the right zoom level. It's nice that now it's actually just from memory. It's a lot better than the last year. Yeah. It was pretty bad last year. I mean, it took me forever to figure out how to do those icons and stuff like that. Yeah, that's funny. So obviously, like th this is a really good overview. Um, you can see the level of interactivity that you can do. Basically, the styling is pretty similar to QGIS. The, the basic advantage of this is one, it's completely open. Right? Anybody with the uh, link can go to that map. Two is the multiple uh, zooms do give you access to different kinds of visualizations. So one zoom, you can do a really general one. A closer zoom, you can do more detail. You can even turn layers on and off at different zooms. You might start with a zoomed out view of the whole city where you have a heat map, and actually zoom in, turn that heat map off, and turn on points. So you can really curate that experience between panning and zooming. It's really like your two dimensions of experience. And I think the, the, the most important addition to QGIS is the tooltip. So really think about how you can use those to share specific information about the points. You can show the value, but you can also add text, right? So you want to be as descriptive as possible, saying what is the most important feature, like there's, there are 20 restaurants, and you can put those in as variables and really make it kind of a ex exploratory. So apparently they, they kicked my file off from the previous class. So I'll, I think there's like a year time limit on having data within a folder, so keep that in mind. The other advantage is once we have this MB tiles format, um, that's a standard um, the vector tiles format. You can use it on Mapbox's site, which is pretty good, and they have these uh, free um, trial memberships that we can use for the duration of this class. But you can actually use those files separately to in open source kind of situations. So for instance, if we wanted to start a website for all of you guys' projects, we can do that in just JavaScript or any other language and use those same tiles ourselves, which is something we'll consider doing. Yeah. So it's a pretty good, yeah, like last year actually I introduced a few different online tools. Um, there's another one called Cardo uh, DB, which is uh, pretty good. Um, but at this point, Mapbox has really gotten better. The reason I like it is because you do own your data. Like Cardo DB is a one-stop solution to visualization. You actually load in your, yeah, just pull it. Uh, it's a bit different. Um, kind of tool, and at this point, for every kind of tool, there's like 10 different versions. These are just the most um, well-developed. There, you actually load in your data set, and it gives you all the control over visualization in kind of uh, wizard interface, so it's a little bit easier to use from the beginning. Um, it also gives you tools for doing a little bit with time, animation, and making things like heat maps, but it's always just existing on Cardo DB. The reason I like Talmud is because it's standalone software. It lets you create these maps and then export them to a format like uh, MB tiles, which then you can use in different applications online. So it's really like an um, a in-between step towards online visualization. Um, yeah, so with Cardo DB, uh, it's pretty boilerplate as far as what you can do with it. Do um, you have any maps? There's one thing about Cardo DB that's nice is it uses the same styling language as Tilemill, so that Cardo CSS. If you want to explore the styling, you can actually use Cardo DB wizards to do it interactively and then switch over to the. Maybe you can show so it. So this is a bad example. Um, so this is the cell phone information I had earlier, but it's for some reason melding all this. But basically. It works in the same fashion where you have um, uh, you bring in a CSV and it'll give you that table view. So it's green also being the integer once again. Uh, and once you have this, yeah. Yeah. once you have this in here, um, there's a, a lot of templates you can use in order to visualize this information. So we're only dealing with, I think, five points right here. But for these purposes, yeah, you go to the wizard, and for example, um, if I'm in a bubble uh, by my price, it can do that. But the real draw to this, like uh, Dan was just saying, uh, is that you can kind of pick a style, take um, the CSS, 
uh, from here and literally copy and paste it into tile mill. So um, I'll just I mean, yep. All right. I can basically do that right now. So let's say um, I want to take these points. So um, go here and add my uh, SoFun price points. going to turn off my nodes and lines as well as my This is a relatively large file. Okay, there we go. So we have all this within here, and we have our price, which is already set out. And so we see in uh, CardoDB that it has this all justified within um, pretty good tolerance of the uh, price. So just to demonstrate how this works, just take it from. You can pick your style. For example, I'm doing bubble, but you can also do the same with uh, color and categories or doing clusters if they exist um, or just simple stylizing. But let's say um, weighted um, markers. Just go to here, copy, and then Same layer. And then this should work. And it hasn't. Attribute the same name, price. <coughs> yep. Oh, it's capitalized. Okay. okay. Yeah, it's the same language. So you can copy and paste, or you can just use it to kind of see what the language can do. Okay, we do like five So with Talmo, you can't do dynamic. You can't have something like change by itself. You can do interactive, right? Scroll around, click on something. Um, you can't do dynamic. Next week, I'll show you some tools for dynamic stuff um, through example. If you want to do something like that, it is a little bit more difficult. So it requires you to actually do some JavaScript. Um, I'll show you, I think, three tools for doing dynamic stuff. Because um, there's no really, it's not part of this kind of standard toolkit in class. The three things I can think of top of my head is one doing in Python, so you can actually create animations in Python using the same kind of plotting library that we used in the last week's tutorial. And so there's a library that will like plot points and then plot charts. You can use that to actually make animations um, and export them to a new file. Another way is there's other pro um, kind of programming languages like processing, which are specifically made for making like animation and graphics. That's definitely outside the realm of the class. I know some people might be taking classes with classes in school. I can show you an example of how you can quickly do like an animated map and processing. And the other way is D3. And D3 is, have you guys heard of that? It's becoming really popular for like online graphics. Um, D3 is a library for JavaScript that makes creating graphics online a lot easier. And actually, something like this. 
how it's probably due to under the hood. Mm -hmm. um, and that just create uh, is an easy library to create graphics, create motion. So it's another way it's actually to use JavaScript online to um, to create those that motion. But all three of those tools are a bit beyond the, the class, just because they involve um, a deeper knowledge of like the specific kind of programming for animation. So what we've been doing a lot with Python is doing like, data analysis. Um, but once you learn the syntax, you can apply it to a lot of other things. So I think next week I'll just show you like three examples and I'll put them online if you want to go any of those routes. You can explore the code and then also online. So, uh, and it's particular for the project, like we can talk about what might be the best and easiest implementation for the project. Cool. So you guys have any questions? Like this part is required for all the projects because everybody's going to do something in QGIS. You should be able to uh, recreate it as a interactive map fairly easily. So it shouldn't be that arduous a process. I mean, Alex did this in an hour, right? Put it into the map. So, and it's the kind of workflow I suggest you take is do everything in QGIS or ArcGIS, and then just take that data and recreate the map in in Google or in a Atomic in Google. Um, and it's important to me again, just uh, theoretically in terms of the, the idea of the class to not do all this processing and all this analysis of the city and then kind of leave it hanging out on their laptops. We want to be able to have it accessible. Even if no one wants to look at it, we're going to give them the chance to at least try it. Um, okay, does anybody have any questions about Calmel? Okay, so we can start our discussion. It's kind of good that we have a lot of extra time today because this is our last.